having traveled by almost every conceivable means of transport during her record-breaking reign, including Concorde, carriages, steam trains, elephants and a South Pacific war canoe, the Queen can now add one last night, she made her official British debut in a golf cart in order to attend one of her favorite events, the Chelsea Flower Show. A little over half a century after devising the walkabout, when she first plunged into a crowd of strangers during a 1970 visit to Wellington, New Zealand, Her Majesty has now invented the cart and I am sure will be seeing a lot more of it. There are few non-state occasions in the national calendar which have enjoyed the sort of devotion the Queen has displayed towards the Chelsea Flower Show throughout her life. She has been coming here almost every year since she was a child. And she plainly loves it as much as ever. Judging by her enthusiasm last night as, dressed in luminous pink, she inspected displays dedicated to mental health, lifeboats, community cohesion, there, in the Grand Marquis, she was introduced to a giant silhouette of her own head, made by royal florist Simon Lysett and comprised of seventy hand-thrown flower pots, each planted with lily of the valley, her favorite. She appeared delighted when Mr. Lysett informed her the plants would be going from here to a selection of school. There were plenty of other familiar faces, too. When top grower Raymond Devison was introduced as the king of the Clematis, the Queen of the United Kingdom replied, I know he is. And at the Garden for the Charity Mind, she paused for a long discussion on the soothing qualities of dark pop. It has been three years since the Queen last attended the show, memorably inspecting the Duchess of Cambridge's child-friendly Back to Nature Garden in 20. Back then, she was on foot. Pre-pandemic, pre-widowhood pre-episodic mobility problems, that occasion might now feel like an yet none of Chelsea's perennial appeal, its life-affirming sense of renewal and its sweet-scented promise of summer just around the corner, has been lost. That's why the Queen has always been thrilled to be here. The first fixture of the time-honored British season, it serves as the harbinger of so many beloved summer traditions, trooping the color, royal ascot, goodwood and spread over 23 acres. The showground is a demanding walk for any visitor. The main marquee alone can accommodate 500 London, so there was no way, in her 97th year, that she could have enjoyed all this. Here was the perfect opportunity to unveil the latest addition to the vehicle fleet in the Royal Prices for the six seater model start at pound 20,000. Driven by a royal chauffeur, in peaked cap and gloves. The six-seat buggy kept a stately walking pace indoors and the Queen was accompanied by the Royal Horticultural Society President, Keith Weed, while her lady-in-waiting, Jennifer Gordon Lennox, and Mrs. Weed sat at the at every turn. The Queen seemed to have an observation or a point to make. Despite the well-rehearsed route, there were plenty of unscheduled stops too, including one to admire the display of lilies by Cheshire florist. Laura, we can now expect to see the buggy at a number of events over the summer. Though they have been used for some time for private pottering on the royal estates, it is understood that Her Majesty had reservations about using one for an official engagement, especially for one as high profile as this. If she is to turn up at an event, she, very understandably, wishes to. The late Queen Mother voiced similar concerns before she was coaxed into a golf buggy in her late 90s in order to attend race meetings. It was the Queen herself who had the brainwave which won her mother round. Why not paint the thing in her mother's racing colors? That plan was a triumph. Last night, the Queen's buggy carried no livery, since I understand that it is should it become a permanent fixture. Some royal colors and a coat of arms may be in surroundings as colorful as this, however, there was no need. After the monarch missed this month's state opening of Parliament, there were concerns that she might find some of her major platinum jubilee events too much of an ordeal. Those worries receded six days later when she appeared at the Royal Windsor Horse Show's equestrian pageant and then sat through more than two hours of open air evening entertainment. Two days later, she was at Paddington Station to unveil the new Elizabeth line, radiating enthusiasm and good spirits in bright spring. Last night's scenes would certainly seem to bode very well for the Jubilee proper less than a fortnight hen. They also reflect the Queen's genuine, lifelong love of gardens. Her knowledge and expertise. Her father, George VI, 
was an obsessive gardener. The late Queen Mother received the Royal Horticultural Society's Victoria Medal of Honor, its highest award, as did her brother, Sir David Bowes Lyon, a former RHS president, making them the only brother and sister to win the accolade. The broadcaster Wesley Kerr, a member of the RHS Council, has written an authoritative study of the Queen's love of horticulture in the society's latest magazine. How we garden is an expression of national and individual culture, he writes. In Queen Elizabeth's record breaking seven decades as sovereign, horticulture has reflected and expressed social and environmental. In 2013, garden gnomes were admitted to the Chelsea Flower Show for the first. The Queen duly gave them the royal seal of approval and made a point of inspecting a gnomic display. At this year's show, the Grand Marquis includes a photographic display of the Queen's visits over the The contrast between an award-winning garden in her coronation year, 1953, and today could hardly be more pro back then. It was all manicured lawns and immaculate displays of roses and fox today, it is about wildflowers, sustainability, mindfulness, biodiversity, and bees. Many of this year's gardens have a strong bee theme, given the catastrophic fall in numbers in recent years. It was good to see the Bumblebee Conservation Trust making its debut. If you can only plant two things, plant nasturtiums and sunflowers, said its education officer. Andy Benson. Nor was the Queen the only great British gardener to be found among the shrubbery yesterday. Earlier, I found Dame Joanna Lumley joining Chelsea pensioners and young garden designers admiring the body shop. There's nothing like Chelsea to restore your belief in gardening and to make you want to get the secateurs out, explained Dame Joanna, while happily accommodating an endless succession of self at the Blue Peter Garden, a reunion of presenters past and present including the great Valerie Singleton, was taking place to mark a campaign to help children appreciate the joy of compost. Of all the exhibitors, few were paying more attention to the weather than London garden designers the plantmen. Their display consists of hundreds of plants encased in 120 blocks of ice. The idea is to highlight the threat of climate change, though it could be awkward if they highlight it too. They must be the only people not hoping for sunshine this week as Chelsea bounces back to life after its three-year hiatus. With 140,000 visitors expected by the weekend, could there be a more potent sign that our great British summer is back than the sight of Chelsea and fate in the company of our jubilee?